Hello, I'm Father Joe Roche of the Marian Fathers of the Immaculate Conception. Thank you for joining us as we continue with our year-long journey, reading the diary of St. Maria Faustina Kowalska from beginning to end. Today, we take up from where we left off, beginning with diary entry number 28. Once, Jesus told me, Go to Mother Superior, probably Mother Raphael, and ask her to let you wear a hair shirt for seven days, and once each night you are to get up and come to the chapel. I said yes, but I found a certain difficulty in actually going to the Superior. In the evening, Jesus asked me, How long will you put it off? I made up my mind to tell Mother Superior the very next time I would see her. The next day, before noon, I saw Mother Superior going to the refectory, and since the kitchen, refectory, and St. Aloysia's little room are all close to each other, I asked Mother Superior to come into Sister Aloysia's room and told her of the wish of the Lord Jesus. At that, Mother answered, I will not permit you to wear any hair shirt. Absolutely not. If the Lord Jesus were to give you the strength of a colossus, I would then permit those mortifications. I apologized for taking up Mother's time and left the room. At that very moment, I saw Jesus standing at the kitchen door, and I said to him, You commanded me to ask for these mortifications, but Mother Superior will not permit them. Jesus said, I was here during your conversation with the Superior and know everything. I don't demand mortification from you, but obedience. By obedience, you give great glory to me and gain merit for yourself. One of the mothers, probably Mother Jane, when she learned about my close relationship with the Lord Jesus, told me that I must be deluding myself. She told me that the Lord Jesus associates in this way only with the saints and not with sinful souls like you, sister. After that, it was as if I mistrusted Jesus. In one of my morning talks with him, I said, Jesus, are you not an illusion? Jesus answered me, my love deceives no one. On one occasion, I was reflecting on the Holy Trinity, on the essence of God. I absolutely wanted to know and fathom who God is. In an instant, my spirit was caught up into what seemed to be the next world. I saw an inaccessible light and in this light what appeared like three sources of light which I could not understand. And out of that light came words in the form of lightning which encircled heaven and earth. Not understanding anything, I was very sad. Suddenly, from this sea of inaccessible light came our dearly beloved Savior, unutterably beautiful, with his shining wounds. And from this light came a voice which said, Who God is in his essence, no one will fathom, neither the mind of angels nor of man. Jesus said to me, Get to know God by contemplating his attributes. A moment later, he traced the sign of the cross with his hand and vanished. Once I saw a big crowd of people in our chapel, in front of the chapel and in the street, because there was no room for them inside. The chapel was decorated for a feast. There were a lot of clergy near the altar, and then our sisters and those of many other congregations. They were all waiting for the person who was to take a place on the altar. Suddenly I heard a voice saying that I was to take the place on the altar. But as soon as I left the corridor to go across the yard and enter the chapel, following the voice that was calling me, all the people began to throw at me whatever they had to hand, mud, stones, sand, brooms, to such an extent that I was at first hesitant to go forward. But the voice kept on calling me even more earnestly, and so I walked on bravely. When I entered the chapel, the superiors, the sisters, the students, and even my parents started to hit me with whatever they could, and so whether I wanted to or not, I quickly took my place on the altar. As soon as I was there, the very same people 
the students, the sisters, the superiors, and my parents all began to hold their arms out to me, asking for graces. And as for me, I did not bear any grudge against them for having thrown all sorts of things at me, and I was surprised that I felt a very special love, precisely for those persons who had forced me to go more quickly to my appointed place. At the same time, my soul was filled with ineffable happiness, and I heard these words, Do whatever you wish. Distribute graces as you will, to whom you will, and when you will. Then instantly, the vision disappeared. A hair shirt is something that you wear which is very itchy. It's a penitential practice, a sacrifice that might be asked of a victim's soul. I had mentioned that a victim's soul uh, is a special soul who joins in and shares in the suffering of Christ as an offering to God to make reparation for others, for the conversion of souls. Jesus, it's very interesting in this passage, would ask St. Faustina to receive permission from her superior before doing what he asked of her. It shows how much he values the vow of obedience. We can also see the humanity of the sisters as they judge one another imperfectly. Uh, one of the sisters thinks that St. Faustina is a, is a very sinful sister, and in fact, she's a saint. Um, St. Faustina, in this passage, also wants to get to know the essence of God, the Holy Trinity. But it is too much for us to understand here on earth, even in heaven, we won't be able to completely understand the essence of God. But Jesus says to get to know God by contemplating his attributes, and his greatest attribute is, of course, his mercy. And then St. Faustina seems to see a, a sort of a mystical representation of her canonization, her becoming a saint. And all of those who s caused her to suffer on earth, even her parents, uh, helped her to become a saint more quickly. And then many are asking her for her intercession. And she is a great and powerful intercessor for us. And so let us ask St. Faustina to pray for us as we seek God's mercy.